I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over. And I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you. But I want you to know the night that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. That was Dr. King's in his final speech in Memphis the night before he was assassinated, where he was addressing political engagement. To continue this discussion, we have as our guest on this subject, Representative Russell Holmes, Chair of the Massachusetts Black and Latino Legislative Caucus, also Reverend Monica Bowman, a newly elected school committee member in the city of Cambridge, and she's also pastor of the Rooted Community. Also with us, Shagun Idaru, co-founder of the Boston Police Camera Action Team, an organization pushing for police body cameras. Welcome to Urban Update. Thanks Thank for coming you. in on this Dr. King weekend. I have to say, wow, that uh, that that clip, uh, that speech still gives me chills when I hear it uh, so many, many years later. Representative Holmes, let me start with you. When you hear Dr. King speaking about making public change, what, what strikes you about that? So still, Byron, that speech gives me chills too. And what strikes me most is the vision that he brought. And so, and with that vision, he brought so much leadership. And so, you know, there's a phrase that a leader knows where to go, goes that way, and then goes and brings people with them. And so Dr. King, when he talked about what we should do, still today it resonates to me that we should be great leaders. And that's the challenge I think we still have today. Uh, Reverend uh, Bowman, uh, you're a newly minted school committee member. Congratulations. Should Dr. King's life uh, inspire public service? How do you think it should inspire public service? Well, as Dr. King said, everyone can be great because everyone can serve. And I think it's fundamentally important that we look beyond ourselves and see how we can give back to our communities. But we can't stop there. A lot of times during this holiday weekend, we stop with the message of service when it comes to Dr. King. And the reality is, if we want to create a democracy that really benefits all that lives within it, there has to be push and pull, and there has to be individuals that hold elected officials like myself accountable so we can ensure that there is justice and equality for all people. Now, uh, Shagun Idabu, you're trying to actually shape policy in the city. How's, uh, how's King an inspiration to you? Well, I'd say that uh, Dr. King has been an inspiration in probably all of the movements that I've taken. Uh, you know, I've not only marched uh, with Black Lives Matter and been arrested, uh, but also have taken it a step farther to push for policy in the city. You know, uh, Dr. King once said, you cannot legislate the heart, but you can regulate behavior. And uh, one thing that we're trying to do with the Boston Police Camera Action Team is to regulate uh, how the how officers interact with uh, the citizens. By putting, uh, By putting body cameras, body cameras on, on, on the police officers. Mm -hmm. All right. Representative Holmes, uh, Dr. King often spoke about uh, achieving a beloved community. What, um, what does that mean for you as an elected official? Sure. I, I think uh, when he spoke about it, he wasn't speaking about uh, some type of utopia and how things would be great in the future. But I think he was very pragmatic, which is exactly what I think we need to be as elected officials. And I think about how he would go out and make sure the cameras were there because there was still just not a realization that this is still happening in the South. People just didn't believe it. And so some of the things that we have to do as elected folks is still to just push hard and say, this is important, this is still happening, and in so many ways we're still disadvantaged in our neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Dr. Uh, Reverend Bowman, uh, uh, tell me how Dr. King inspires a younger generation of uh, ministers like yourself, and uh, what from King do you convey to your congregation and your constituents? Mm -hmm. I believe that Dr. King's message, particularly in the era of Black Lives Matter, in the era where our young people are literally growing up seeing that people that look just like them, lives can be taken away in a moment. It, his message still resonates and it's significant when we're talking about, you know, particularly my congregation and constituencies that 
our message of King is not something of the yesteryears. It is living, it is breathing, and it is our responsibility to ensure that that dream becomes a reality. And that is being active in the community. That is pushing us to really, truly address some of the inequalities that is really prevalent in a lot of um, minority communities, particularly. And uh, Shagun, I guess, um, were he alive today, what do you think Dr. King would be challenging uh, in terms of what problems confront your generation? Well, I'd say that uh, if Dr. King were alive today, he'd be pretty disappointed that he'd be pushing for the same issues he was fighting for in 1968 uh, in, in terms of uh, economic injustice, uh, racial injustice, police brutality. Um, I think he'd be pushing for the same issues that he was pushing for in 68. No, you were all obviously politically activists. We have two elected officials here and uh, you're an activist yourself. What do you think Dr. King would um, uh, say about our, our politics today, this uh, divided politics that we have, uh, what we've been uh, witnessing uh, the, this last year, you, you mentioned it, uh, Black Lives Matter. What do you, how do you think he would look at this? Would he say that we haven't gone any, traveled anywhere? Or what do you well, think? Well, I, I think when you look at his, his, uh, his writings and his, really his speeches, he expected to have things confrontational. I mean, so to, for something to be confrontational is not a problem. I think that he was just much more results oriented. He thought uh, when you talk about just how how he would then perceive things today would simply be this should be normal, but we should be results oriented, and so we just we're just fighting one another today and not being results oriented. And that's where his leadership would be very important and really impactful today if he was still here. What do you think, uh, uh, Reverend Bowman? The the political the divided political situation that we have today, our politics of uh, 2016. What do you think, Dr. King? Would have to say about that. Dr. King in his day was pretty radical and it's really interesting as we sit back and we watch what's unfolding particularly at the national level particularly with the presidential election you know would we would Dr. King would have called it what it was or what it is um, right now we refer to it as something controversial has been said or is happening but would Dr. King just call it racism Okay. Is there anything, anybody here, when to wrap this up, is there anything that Dr. King uh, would be happy about today? <laughs> sure. I, I would say uh, there are lots of things we all should be happy about. I, I think that we have seen tremendous progress since Dr. King's day. And the, the, po the point isn't just we need to be happy, but we need to be consistent in saying we need to fight for more. And that's what I'm sure he would still be doing today. Okay, and I'll leave it right there. Representative Russell Holmes, I'm Monique, Reverend Monika Brown, congratulations on uh, getting on the school committee. And Shogun Idowu, thank you all for coming in. And uh, by the way, how's it going? Uh, are you making any progress with the body cameras? Uh, we have made some significant progress. Uh, you know, uh, the commissioner announced in September that uh, pilot programs coming to Boston, and now we're just pushing to make sure that uh, community-oriented policy uh, is enacted before that rolls Okay, out. we'll keep an eye on it and see how it goes. Thanks for coming in, all of you, on this Martin Luther King Day weekend. Well, in just a few moments, some information on some of the events this weekend and more details on tomorrow's annual MLK Breakfast and the 19th annual King Cabral event at UMass Boston right here on Urban Update. We'll be right back.